Okay, so how we're gonna make the coils, we're gonna grab a bunch of wire, we're gonna grab a coil bobbin, and we're just going to wrap the wire around the bobbin 2,000 times. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Okay, good day, fellow Russians. Let's make a pinball coil. So you're gonna think, what the heck's this guy talking about? So I'll be working on a power play in the not too distant future. And part of the characteristics of the game has got these fantastic chimes that start when you turn the game on. Um, and my problem is I've got three coils, but I need one more. So let me just show you what the ohms are on the coil. So we're shooting for 52 ohms. So basically I'm just putting my leads across the coil. Okay, and it's on ohms right there. And this is one that I took out that was completely burnt. It's measuring 5.1. And what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to graft this coil here, and I'll explain in a second, onto, so this one measures at 48. Let's call it so we're pretty close. Pretty close works in horseshoes and hand grenades. So what the method to the madness we're gonna try to do again is take winding up this coil and graft it onto this one. So this is the proper coil for the game. This thing is melted. Like I took the the bob out of it. I used a drill bit to pull it out. Should have waited did that on camera but anyway so how a coil works is the first number tells you what the gauge is and the second number is the amount of turns so in this case it is 31 so that's the thickness of the wire the gauge by 2,000 turns and this one you can barely see it but it's the same 31 uh 2000 so i've done this before so that's kind of how i know where i think it's going to work anyway where i've used a different number of turns coil altogether, but i got the gauge on on the right one so now you're thinking okay how the heck are we going to put it from here to here i don't have any fancy tools i don't have any fancy counters or anything like that so we're just going to use yeah this is going to sound kind of nuts but we're just going to use these two pulls in my basement and what I'm going to do is just string the coil, the uh, wire around here and get the right amount of, what's this, revolutions around here and then put it on the, on the bobbin with a drill and a, just a simple drill bit. So I'll bring you back when that happens and I'm going to, hopefully, this thing's not one big melted pile. So when I take off the... And I'll, I'll do this on camera, but I'll take off the sheathing and I'll unwind the coil and hopefully I'll be able to go around uh, these columns, like I said, to get the right amount of column revolutions as opposed to actual spin revolutions. If you've got some fancy machine that rotates this and has a counter, the way they make the coils, then you're well ahead of the game. But we're going to do it sort of the ghetto version and uh, the quick and dirty. Okay, so let me put you down and let's start uh, having some fun with this. Okay, let's cut the paper ever so gently because I don't want to cut the windings. Okay, now remember, I need the carrier for this. I don't obviously need the wires. I don't need the diode. I don't need anything like that. All right. So let's cut, and I'll explain the theory and everything as we go. So let me cut this side here. And I'm going to have some luck. I'm going to unravel it. I'm going to show you. Stage two. Okay. So we're going to start with the wire. I'm going to 
tape it to the column and then I'm gonna start walking around. And hopefully the wire doesn't either fall apart, hope it doesn't fall apart or hopefully it's not like kind of welded to itself. So we're gonna start here. Sure you guys can see. Of course I dropped it and you can barely see so let me lower it. Yeah. You can see, okay. Let's walk around the poles. And grab, yeah. All right, I'm just gonna grab something. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm pulling it by hands just to make sure that this wire doesn't break. Okay, so that's almost two, that's two revolutions. Are so good, that's three. There's ten. So I'm gonna show you something. Look at the discoloration. Now it's getting a bit difficult to start pulling it right here, because this is where the, the burn is. So if these wires are soldered together or melted together, then it's gonna cause me some grief on the counts. But we're at 10. Wow, look at that, almost 16 and a half. All right, call it 16 and a half. And we're down to the beginning of the coil. Okay. Now, same deal. I'm gonna unravel the donor coil. Okay, let's get a better look at a coil here. Here's the background. So, there's your diode, your two, is this for wood? Uh, and your two lugs. So the lugs are just uh, soldered across, and same with the wire. And there it goes. <laughs> All right, a couple of things to note. At the end of the day, I just need receptacle i just need this uh, coil body i don't need you know anything else why am i doing this because these things delivered are probably about 80 bucks 70 bucks 
if you look here, this is where the wire actually, on the old, that one I just took off, melted. And it actually sort of embedded itself in the actual plastic. And if you look in here, the coil sleeve got so hot that it melted itself there as well. So how do I test coils? If I don't have a multimeter, easy way is just see if the sleeve will go in and out. Okay, this one's, it's not bad. It's a little tight. I'm gonna to try to clean off that residue there. I'm also gonna clip off the coil diode so that when I get this thing spinning on the drill, I'll show you that in a second, uh, the diode doesn't interfere with the way it's working. Okay, so uh, at when I, I'm just gonna drill a bit, let me show you what I did. Step it on me, but the way I cleaned this one out originally is I just got an appropriate step drill that was the, the same width and I just drilled it through and it did a really good job getting rid of the residue so now okay here's the donor so take the wrapper off and we're going to catch okay right here okay same thing we're gonna walk around the pillars so you might be asking yourself why does this work if these wires are all touching each other? Well, this gold or yellow is actually just a coating. So when you go to solder it onto the, the solder point here, you gotta scrape off the gold or red or whatever color it might be, okay? Okay, this one I'm gonna have to be a little bit more cautious on. I just have it resting on a drill bit. So here we go. Okay, we're two pulls short. So that's gonna mean less revolutions are gonna mean higher resistance. So 52 is our goal. Maybe we'll come in at 45, 46 ohms, I don't know. But we're gonna go for it anyway. We're gonna put it on the spool. We're gonna see what happens. Here's the old one. A lot of wire, eh? And you can see how it's discolored, the black, that's where it got nice and hot and it cooked to itself. Okay, let's throw some caution to the wind here. Let it set up our, our bobbin and I will bring you back. Okay, all I did is took a bolt. Bolt and a washer, went through, washer, bolt, don't kill it, but tighten it enough so that this thing doesn't spin, up your drill. spin away now you're gonna say why didn't I go from bobbin to bobbin why didn't I just uh, here let me show you 
why didn't I just go from this bobbin and just set up some kind of a jig so that we could eliminate this whole process of walking around. The reason for the walking around was basically just to measure how much wire we had. Yeah, I probably could have gone like this to this, spun it, got it off, put it on the new coil. But I didn't know how many revolutions because the length of the wire and the amount of revolutions on the bobbin is what dictates the strength of the coil. So we fell short here, but again, let's throw some caution to the wind, see what happens. In the perfect world, I would have had too much uh, on this bobbin, then I could have cut it off. But uh, let's, I don't know, five ohms, I don't think that's gonna be, oh, I'm guessing five ohms, who knows, it might be even more. Uh, but let's just see where it goes. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this here and then see, see how it's got this lip. I'm gonna feed it under the lip and then we're gonna start our revolving. Okay, so let me just do that. And I'll bring you right back. All right, I think I did my best. I didn't take the coating off just yet. I just wrapped it around and I went here I went underneath this lip and it went on top and now we're going to start feeding the bobbin. Now, am I going to get this thing 100% on the money the way the factory did? Not even close, but I'm going to do my damn best to try to do it. So let's show you. So installation is re reverse of dismantling. So I'm going to set my drill and then I'm just going to walk it on and I'll show you how I'm doing it as I get close. Okay, see uh, what we're doing? Oh, okay. Take you back to the workbench. All right, with sandpaper, I'm gonna scrape off the gold and I'm gonna wrap it around. Then I'm gonna put the diode in, solder it, and we'll test it. I might, you know what, let me take another. Okay.
Okay, let's go get the ohm meter. Let's take this off. It's hot. Okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm okay with that, 49.5. Our goal was what, 51? Try it again. We're not that far off. Okay, let's try it in the game now. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. I'm actually just gonna graft it onto this, what is this, Knight Rider that I have. Let me plug it in and show you that it works. I'm gonna set the plug. You'll see these things wrap off. Okay, we're gonna put it onto this one. Okay, I just took the, I don't know which one this is, I took it off, and I just basically grafted like a life support. Start the game. This puppy should jump up and down. Okay, and then it's the da -da 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 -da, that's the one we're looking for. Disconnect. Let's see. All right, this is completely removed now. All right, okay. Done. How's that? How do you like them apples? Hey. I might have embellished on the costs. You know what, let's go to my favorite, one of my favorite pinball websites anyways. Let's see what this thing's gonna cost us. Okay, let's go to Marco. Let's up here. And what was it, a, what was that? Let's try. What was it, a 31? If I'm going by, yeah, I think it was 31. 31, 2,000 coil. Ah, here we go, okay. 31, 2,000, it's this one here. That's not too bad, so it's 20 bucks. This is US dollars. I convert it to Canadian. That gets me 30, plus $20 to ship it. We're at 50. Plus HST in our country here, all the taxes we got to pay at the border. Call it 60 bucks. I usually take uh, US values and either double or triple them. So whether it be 40, whether it be 60, it doesn't matter what it is. The fact that I had everything on hand to get it going is even better. It's money in the bank. Like I didn't have to buy it, which saves you some cash but you know i may do let's try it again love it okay, let's do it uh, by a coil test there we go so that should ring out person it's the boom here we go Good to go. Okay, Russians, I hope, I don't know, I hope this one proved that I'm either cheap or somewhat handy. And, and again, the, the way I figured it out the first time I did this, 
I didn't have a counter. Well, I, I can count, you know, how many steps I take or how many revolutions around a pull. And that's exactly what we did. Okay, uh, what do I got going down in the near future? So we have this evil, uh, this Knight Rider. I'm going to show you some stuff on this as well. The skate ball is done. And I have an interesting one. I have a power play. I have another kiss with a Flash Gordon back last. Don't ask. But this one's going to be cool because uh, I'm going to... I'm gonna, we're going to print to wood on this play field. We're going to fully restore it. Rub out the old artwork, put on new artwork, but we're going to get it printed just like I did for this. And I'll show you. This is uh, very similar to my sky jump. For those of you that saw that video, uh, the same thing. And I'll show you the process to how I've done it. So I got a lot in the hopper. I just got to motivate myself to get her done. But anyway, Russians, I want to thank you for your patronage. I want to thank you for your kind words. Rushfan at live.ca. Get in touch with me if you need to call, if you need to email me. And I'm going to call it over and out. Talk to you guys soon.